It's time to continue sewing our beautiful coat. This is part three of a coat sew along featuring the legging coat from Stitch to Stitch. Lots to see today, pockets, skirt pieces and sleeves. Stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And this one is about coat sewing. This is episode three of my coat sew along featuring the legging coat from Stitch to Stitch. Episode one went up last week on the day that the pattern released. And there I go through a whole overview of the pattern, a really detailed pattern review, fabric choices, sizing, a lot of discussion about how you can approach making your muslin for the coat. You really don't want to miss the first episode. If you jump straight into the sewing, you might not understand a few bits. So please catch up on episode one. Episode two already is up on the channel. There we went through all the pattern pieces and overview, what's interfaced, what's not interfaced, types of interfacing. I even went over some presser feet that are going to be helpful. And then we dove into sewing the bodice, top stitching, assembling the collar, the collar stand, sewing the side seams, and we finished with the waistband being sewn onto the bodice. Episode 3 now picks up on even more sewing. Don't forget that the leg and coat is still 20% off during its release week. I will leave the information down in the description box so you can get your coat pattern if you want to. It is an affiliate link that means I make a small commission from that sale and it doesn't cost you anything extra. It just means that part of the sale comes back to me and that's one way that you can support the work that I do here on YouTube. Totally optional of course, you can go directly to the website and purchase through there. If you don't like affiliate links. In episode three, we are going to touch on three major aspects. One are the inseam pockets. They are anchored onto the waist seam. Once that's done, we're going to focus on putting all the skirt pieces together, sewing the skirt pieces to the waistband, and then sewing the two-piece sleeve. So I'll just show you here. This is the side seam right there. When you put your hand inside, this is the front. That's where the pocket is. The top of the pocket bag is anchored onto the seam, so it doesn't move anywhere. And you can see that it's very clean. You can barely tell that it's there. There we have some lining fabric on the pocket facing and the main pocket bag is made out of the same coat material. It's very neat, understitched. There are no steps skipped in here to get really, really nice pockets. So let's see how to put this pocket together. Don't you think this is starting to wear? The earlier stages when we were doing preparation work like stay stitching and interfacing the pockets were interfaced here between the notches for both the lining and the main you have two of each they are all interfaced within the seam line so you are not interfacing right up to the edge sort of pushed back so that your seam allowance will have interfacing there you can use stay tape, I just cut strips of fusible interfacing and we will start attaching the lining pieces to the front skirt. This is the front skirt side piece, there will be a center piece sewn there but we won't worry about that now. You will see these same two notch marks here on the hip that will match the lining pieces here but we will work from the right side of the fabric. These are the two hips, we'll place these right sides together like that and matching those notches we will sew from there to the very end of these pockets. Both lining pieces are right sides together matching the hip line, matching that notch there and that notch there on the other side as well. You can see they match perfectly and now we will sew this from the top to the bottom. You can see that this pocket reaches the seam of the waist so this pocket will actually be caught in the waist seam so you won't have a pocket that's moving around too much inside. After sewing the pocket lining to the front side piece on the hip between the notches, I have changed my thread to purple because that's the color of my lining. I will open this making sure the seam allowance is underneath the pocket and sew on the edge that's under stitching and will keep the pocket inside. That's how that looks and I'll repeat on the other pocket. Here I have the side back skirt. Those are the hip notches right there on both sides. I will also place these right sides up. This is the hip right there. You will never go wrong if you match your notches. You have two of them there that will match the pocket. It's really hard for you to sew them on the other side. And we have the main pocket bags that are made from the same fabric. We place them right sides together here 
and we do exactly the same that we've done with the lining, exactly the same. So all the way down. Okay, after doing that, open up the seam, make sure the seam allowance is pointing towards the pocket and sew on the edge. That's done there and now repeat on the other pocket and then we can put these together the lining pocket with the main pocket and sew the side seams. Okay, so here we have the side back skirt. This is going to be the hip there. We've just sewn the main pocket back there. And now we take the front side skirt that has the lining pocket and we place them right sides together. Now we are going to sew these two pockets together around there. It'll be sewn twice, once, and then again a quarter of an inch from there to reinforce. So I'll just pin that along, sew that. I have pinned that and I'll show you this up closer. This is where the seam allowance would come and cover that. So I have pinned that out of the way and I have matched that seam to the one at the back with that pin so that they are correct. And I'm going to start sewing as close as I can get to that without getting in the way of this. So probably right there and then curve and finish here on the top. Now I will sew a second row parallel to the other just to have this seam a little bit more reinforced. So you can see two rows there that will reinforce this pocket. Now this is done the exact same on the other side and then we can actually sew the side seams. Okay, after sewing the pocket bag together twice, I have pinned the side seams there. I have done the same thing on the other side but I'm going to be working on this one. From the top waist edge, you will see that first notch that we were working with the pockets and then below you will see the second one. That area needs to be left open so you can put your hand in your pocket. So we will be sewing from there up to there and reinforcing. Now if you can see I have pinned these together matching them right on top of each other making sure that the seam won't hit that under stitching that's already there it'll be right next to it. Then we pick up here and we start there and reinforce same these seams are right on top of each other and from there we sew all the way down to the bottom. So we do this on both of the side seams this one is very short, it's just from here to that notch there. Okay, so that little section was sewn. Let's see how that looks. It looks perfect. That's how it looks. And that's how the entrance of the pocket will look. On one side the main fabric, on the other side the lining fabric, and that looks very clean. So we do the same down below, starting from there. This will be a little bit bulky there, but then it's just a regular seam all the way down to the hem. Just below the pocket bag right there, we'll do a little, a little snip that will allow us to press the side seams open from the pocket bag downwards. Okay, so there are the side seams. There is the area that's partially open for you to put your hand in. So we will repeat this on the other side and then I'll just needle this out and press the seam open here from that little snip downwards. This is how the side seam is going to look. This is the front skirt. This is the back skirt and the pocket will be towards the front of course so you can put your hand to the front and you will see the lining pocket underneath. On the top I pin this together and this needs to be basted on so it will stay firm there. And here you can see where I snipped and was able to press the seam allowance open all the way to the bottom and that's one side seam and here is the other. I have also pinned the pocket on the top so it won't move and I'll just do those quick basting stitches here and we can keep putting the skirt together. Okay. 
You can see that the top of the pocket will be caught in the waistband, so this will be fixed onto the coat. There won't be a random pocket bag moving around on its own, so I like this. I really love the fact that these pockets are stabilized with interfacing. They are very firm, they're not going to stretch out and sag and open up over time. It's just really good. All the steps there I really, really enjoy from the pattern. It's the way I would like to sew pockets and seeing all that in the instructions is marvelous. Now that we've got our pockets sewn, the top of the pocket basted onto the top of the skirt. We have partially the skirt already made. We have the side seams done. Below the waistband, you can see the skirt pieces. There are two on each side on the front and four pieces on the back. After sewing the pocket, we will have the side seam sewn. So the skirt will be partially already made. What's missing are the center back and the center front pieces of the skirt. So your skirt will be very long, extended, it will involve eight pieces. There is a center back seam also. So we'll do that and then we can sew the skirt onto the bottom of the waistband. Up to here we had already been done, remember? Let's see how to put all this skirt piece together and then our coat is really going to look like a coat. Let's see. Now that we have the pockets ready and the side seam sewn, we can then attach the rest of the skirt pieces. So this is the front piece right here. You will have a single notch right there and then you will have the center front skirt that also has the single notch. This is gonna be the center where the facing is gonna go later. So these need to match. I'll just put two pins per seam because you don't see me. You don't need to see me pinning on camera, but it's just a pretty, long straight seam there and then on the back you will also find the center back pieces now on the back there are two center back pieces they have a center back seam and i have already sewn that one i've done that off camera to save time and here you will see two notches that will match the two notches right there so it's very easy to just match up the notches and put this together right there and then on the center back we have this double notch and there we will have a double notch too that matches that one so we're basically assembling this whole skirt piece that will be attached to the waistband later and then over here we have the single notch and the last skirt piece that is the center front single notch single notch and these will match. So it's a skirt piece with many pieces, lots of long seams here. Nothing really interesting or difficult for you to see. Here I'm going to sew the center front there to the side front. I've got it pinned, single notch there, single notch there. The next seam on the skirt is a side seam that we'd already done and now the next seam that we need to sew is the side back to the center back. They are all half an inch seam allowance, just straight seams. There you can see the two notches of the back seams, it's very easy to put this together. Here we are looking at the top of the skirt, so the bulk of the seam allowance is pressed towards the center. When I was pressing all these seams, I pressed them open first, made sure they were really nice and flat and then I pressed the bulk to the side it's supposed to go. So they are very nice. I will just put a pin here so that I don't forget when I'm actually top stitching. The side seam doesn't get top stitched, this is where the pocket is. Then we have one of the seams from the back skirt. This seam will also be pressed towards the center. So this is the center back of the skirt. Both seams will be pressed towards that center seam. So put a pin there so I don't forget, even though they are pressed, you never know. And the center back seam is pressed in the same direction as the bodice center seam was towards the left wearer's side. So here you can see it pointing towards the right, but when you actually wear it on the body like that, you can see it's pointing to the left. So that will be top stitched in that way. Then we have another side seam that is not top stitched and then we have the other seam from the front skirt pointing towards the center. So lots of long seams with top stitching done at 3 8 I won't film this actually because it's just very, very, very boring to watch just sewing straight seams. Then when this is done, then we can attach all these to the waistband that is already attached to the bodice and then we have the outer layer looking like a coat. Here is the bodice, this is the front, you can tell because all these front pieces are interfaced. 
this is the back the back is not interfaced and we had already attached the waistband to the bodice now the bottom of the waistband is attached to the skirt underneath there you can see that the pockets are going to be sewn onto the waistband and you will find several notches to match this seam in the center of the front skirt the side seam there then the next seam on the back skirt everything matches very nicely the center back all the way to the other side so now it's another long straight seam at half an inch seam allowance and then we can press the seam of the waistband towards the waistband so you have it like that this one pointing to the center of the waistband this one as well and then we can top stitch like that with the seam of the skirt with the seam of the skirt pressed up towards the waistband I'll head over to the iron now to press the seam towards the waistband and then I'll be back to top stitch. Okay, so the seam is pressed up. There will be certain areas where there's going to be a lot of layers here, specifically here where the pocket seams are, quite a few layers there. So the only tip I have for you is just to lengthen the stitch length when you go over these bulky areas. I don't have any special tool or any special press of feet or anything. When I was pressing, I would put the steam and the cloth and then just lay a book on it for a couple of seconds to make it as flat as possible. That's about it really. That took a while but it's so pretty so nice and basically the outer coat is now the next stage will be to sew in the sleeves in there now at this point we have a sleeveless coat you know you can put it on although a lot of the seams have been top stitched so it's not like you can change much that's why the muslin process was really really important but you can try it on and see and you know be really happy that your garment is looking like a garment already what we have now is a two-piece sleeve you will find two-piece sleeve in coats in blazers some denim jackets it's always a better fit than a regular one-piece sleeve so don't think that that extra seam here is irrelevant or not necessary it actually is because it incorporates an elbow dart that has been removed and put into the seam line at the back it means the sleeve is going to fit the natural bend that your arm has it's just going to be a much better fit so we have an upper sleeve that is a big sleeve piece and an under sleeve that is a small sleeve piece when we sew these together we're going to have one seam that is longer that's the one that we do first and we top stitch that seam and then we sew the shorter seam and that seam gets pressed open this is the long seam that i'm talking about that will be top stitch this is the one that incorporates a curve that's the one that we sew first and then under here we have a shorter seam that's been pressed open the sleeves of course are set in on the round but don't be too worried about that the ease on it isn't that excessive and coating material really really copes with the easing in it's a really nice process you'll see it's not too bad after that there's an extra step with a sleeve head there is a small piece inside here that gives support to this area the sleeve head is quite a lot of layers through there but i'm sure your machine will cope mine did and i, I just have a mid-range machine you know and then we have a little shoulder pad to sew on by hand don't be scared of shoulder pads you don't need one that's like an inch thick you know one that's about three eighths of an inch thick is going to be perfect I actually just took a pair of <laughs> shoulder pads from an old blazer that I have that I'm not using anymore because I really I couldn't find them I just didn't know where to buy them I know no one had problems finding shoulder pads in the testing group I think I was the only one <laughs> I have two sleeves 
and I've pinned them along the longer seam. There you can see one of them. That is the upper sleeve, that is the under sleeve. You will see another shape there that will create a shorter seam. That's not the one that we're sewing first. We're sewing the longer one. You will find a single notch around the middle right there. And this will meet right there. It's been true to meet the same shape. So this needs to be sewn with a half an inch seam allowance. And then we open this seam and top stitch it down. We do that on both sleeves. And then we can go ahead and sew this other short seam right here. This short seam is not top stitched, just this one here. Here is one of the sleeves, the seam has been pressed towards the upper sleeve, towards the large sleeve piece, right there. I've done the same as with all the other seams, press them open first, nice and flat. I don't have a clapper, instead of using a clapper I'm using books. Once I'm happy that it's very flat, then I press it towards the side it has to go. And now this needs to be top stitched, the same as all the other pieces at 3 8 of an inch. Now I'll repeat with the other sleeve and then we can sew the other short seam of the sleeves. This is the other seam of the sleeve, it's short, you'll see several notches along the way and some here. Half an inch seam allowance on both sleeves and then this seam is pressed open. Here's one of the sleeves, you can see the short seam there, that's the one that has been pressed open. You can see that right above there, there is a single notch on the upper sleeve piece. I'll just mark that with a pin there. All this area along the top curve, crossing this other seam that has been top stitched up to these double notches there is where we need to do gathering stitches. Two parallel stitches with a long stitch length so we can gather this in to set the sleeve into the armhole. There will be ease there. So we do these within the seam allowance. Then repeat, do one close to the other. See, you can see two parallel stitches right there and then we repeat the same on the other sleeve. Okay, here we have the armhole, we have the jacket wrong sides out. As you can see, this is the stay and here is the front that is interfaced and we have our sleeves turned right sides out and now we have a double notch here. I had to mark it on my stay because the original mark was on the main fabric and here is the double notch that will match that double notch so that means I put my sleeve in this way not the other sleeve. So we will match that double notch to that double notch right there. And then we have several other references to match. This one there will match that one. On the sleeve we also have this one that will match the side seam of the bodice right here of the coat. This bottom curve of the sleeve does not have the gathering or the easing into, nothing like that. It fits exactly right. Up here is where the gathering stitch is and from here. This is what we need to gather, but first I'm going to pin the references. On the sleeve we have these two that are going to match the yoke pieces, so that one should match there and that one there and you can see that there is ease here that will need to be gathered and eased into the armhole. I'm going to pull these threads to gather it up and match it on both sides. Okay, you can see that that has been gathered and it's going to fit this section. I am going to pin the sleeves inside the armhole and I'm going to be sewing with this on top and the sleeve on the bottom. The feed dogs will help gather in the excess at the bottom on the sleeves. It makes it much easier than trying to do it with the gathers on the top. Here I also have some threads to pull, the ones on the top. 
Okay, so I've taken my time to pin. I had pulled the threads here on this other area. You can see the gathering in there. But these gathers won't be seen when we sew this. You can see everything matches all the way around and I'll be sewing like this with the armhole on the top and the sleeve on the bottom. I start sewing under the arm around where the side seam is of the bodice and this is half an inch seam allowance. Just careful. I take my time sewing sleeves. It's not something to rush and I'm always feeling with my fingers underneath if there's any pockets forming or anything. Underneath here is where we have some gathering but it's not going to be apparent when we sew it. Okay, that was just sewn. Let's check if there was any packets or pleats formed and I don't see any at all. It's looking nice and smooth. But the truth is when you look on the other side and it's looking very nice on the other side. All that excess is in there and there's no gathers. It was just eased in and having the sleeve at the bottom with the feed dogs is always very helpful. So that was very successful. <laughs> Yay! Now we need to take this sleeve out, bring it all out. Here we had two notches, right? Now we have a piece that is called the sleeve head. It didn't need to be made from the same fabric, but I've chosen to do that. It was one of the options. And this little funny piece will be matching these. You can see there. And then this double notch here will match that one. And now we just need to base this together and sew it on. Now I also want to sew this from this side and have this on the bottom. So I will match that notch here to that one. So this won't be sewn onto the same seam we did, it will be sewn on the outside because it will just be basted on. And this is what is going to give that sleeve that nice roll on the top and provide support there. So there is the double notch and there is the double notch right there. You could have used something else for this like felt but I don't have those things so it can be the self fabric and that's what I'm going to use. Sleeve head will also be eased in here. So you find that it's a little bit longer than your armhole. Okay, so I'll just use a long stitch length and sew this, but within the seam allowance, not on top of the seam that is a definite sleeve seam. Okay, that's how the sleeve head looks when it's sewn into there. You can see the sleeve coming out and that's on top. And now on the other side, look how nice this is going to look there. This is where the sleeve head is. It's right there, you can't see it. You don't know that it's there, but it's giving that beautiful, beautiful support to this shoulder area. Very, very nice. Okay, now that that sleeve head is basted on, it's right there. Now we can sew it on again. <laughs> so basically, from the same side that we were sewing the sleeve onto the armhole, we are going to sew on that same seam. Just starting where that sleeve head starts. So you can see the seam there. I'm going to be sewing right on top of it through all the layers. And then that will complete one of these sleeves. And then comes the part about attaching a shoulder pad. So the sleeve head is there. I can see that and I'll start sewing right on the very same seam I sewed my sleeve on before. Right on top of it, I'll go carefully. So here's where the sleeve head ends here, so I'll stop sewing about there. Okay, so that's one sleeve sewn with a sleeve head, everything. And after sewing both sleeves, I'll take this to the ironing board and just steam all of this so it looks really nice. And then we need to put in a shoulder pad. 
I took these small shoulder pads from one of my ready-to-wear blazers that is unlined so that was easy I didn't really have another choice so you just need to take your shoulder pad it does need to be thin you don't want to choose one that's too thick and center it over these yoke pieces there around there make the edge of the shoulder pad meet the edge of the seam allowance here I'll put a pin right there and I'll just do some hand tacking to hold this to that seam there and that to that seam small little hand stitches there and then this just gets sewn on by hand onto the edge of there and then that's it that's the sleeves and the shoulders done it'll look super nice this is a little shoulder pad it won't be bulky the rest here is just some simple hand sewing by now the coat is looking amazing you have a whole outer shell there with a collar with sleeves skirt pieces sewn onto the bodice i hope you're excited to keep going i hope to motivate you to actually take the plunge and sew a coat you can see that all the steps are very doable very achievable there's nothing really complex about the coat just a few more seams in a regular project it will take you a few days to do nice and relaxed nice and calm but the end product you will be so amazed and so happy so empowered really to tackle anything from now on in episode 4 which is the final episode of this sew along we will have already a coat already finished out of shell but now we need to put together the linings with the facings put that together with the coat the hems buttonholes very fun because in episode four everything will come together and you have a beautiful coat at the end remember i have my affiliate link in the description box for the leg and coat pattern and also the playlist for the sew along where you can click and find them all there so you can keep up with everything really easily remember there are timestamps chapters in the description also so you can go to a specific site you can click on the exact minutes when you want to come back and look at something specific i hope this is really helpful and i'm really happy to be doing this for you even though I know the views for these sew alongs are really, really low, I know that the few people that are watching and that this is going to be helpful for, it makes it all worth it for me. So it's just a little gift from me to you who are subscribed here. I will see you again very soon with episode four. Bye and happy coat sewing.